born in Ottawa, Ontario. I was a child of the 70s. Uh, my brothers all played guitar, three older brothers, and my father played guitar. There was something about music that I just grabbed onto right away. <laughs> and music outside and rock and roll and it was just such a wild time and everybody was so wild like all my siblings were like hippies and you know pot smokers and you know I mean they were just kind of like kids of the day right and I knew at 13 I would play guitar and then at 15 I discovered blues and that was through basically the music that they had been into I just started researching what came before that you know so my you know, my sister was into the Rolling Stones and that sort of led me to blues and my brothers were into Led Zeppelin and Eric Clapton and, and it's all blues based stuff. So I kind of just found my way back to that. When I discovered real blues and I went to my first blues show, I had an epiphany. It was when I was 15 and I, the show was a James Cotton show. Something magical happened in that moment and uh, I realized the power of that music. I like the intimacy of it. I like that it was played in clubs mostly. I like the immediacy. I like the feeling like the audience and the performers were become one. There was a real intermingling of everything that happened energetically and um, I don't know, I was just mo so moved that I never changed paths. I identify with myself as a Canadian and I love to come up, back up here and I've, I've spent a lot of time up here and then I feel the pull to go down there to play the music with the people who were still around playing it. Because I studied the music and I studied the history of it, I knew it wasn't from Canada. And I knew, you know, I'm a white girl from Ottawa playing blues guitar. I knew in order to learn how to play this music well or properly or even get close, you need to get closer to the source of where it came from. And really for me, that was the Southern US. And specifically for me, for the style I wanted to play was Texas. Now, I could have gone to Mississippi, I could have gone to New Orleans, I could have gone to Chicago. There's all different regions where the sounds have their own flavor. But Texas resonated with me and that's where I wanted to go. 
And, and when I say Texas, I specifically mean Austin, Texas. I'm not talking about Dallas and I'm not talking about Houston because they have different sounds. So Austin sort of has this own, this whole thing that's happened there. It's a specific sound and there's a way of playing that only really happens there. And that's all I can say to explain it. I mean, um, it's a style of drumming specifically. It's a style of guitar that evolved from different things. Um, but it really just is a sound. It's just a way of playing. And um, it's not that people can't play it up here. It just doesn't happen up here. I guess it's in the air. It's in, it's in everything that happened in that place. Lot of, there's a lot of things that sort of sh shift in my career, but I really think getting the stamp of approval from the Austin music scene, um, that I belong there and in the, in the blues scene there, and that people like the way I played, just acknowledging that I was good enough to play with the, that caliber of musician made a huge difference to me. When I first got down to Austin and I would play with, um, in the house band at Antones, you know, I was able to sit in with a lot of my heroes like Albert Collins and I sat in with Buddy Guy, we toured with Buddy Guy, we toured with Coco Taylor, we've toured with Johnny Winter and um, George Thorogood and then, you know, on stage at Antones in Austin, I got to play with, you know, everybody that came through from Earl King to Jimmy Rogers and Pine Top Perkins and Hubert Sumlin and um, just, I mean, a whole, I can't even remember everybody right now, but it, a lot of people. I came to you this evening from far away from here. I came to you this evening from far great. I think it's a great experience. I always think it's, it's fantastic to be different, right? People pay money to see things that are different. There's a lot of these and they're like, oh, there's only one of that. Maybe I'll go see that, right? So it's been a blessing. I mean, uh, I can only imagine, I think, I think a lot of women, when they see me play and sing, I think they get inspired. I think they find it empowering. They like to see a woman up there up front doing what traditionally men do, which is play lead guitar and lead the band and, you know, do the whole thing. And I think, I think both men and women find that inspiring. I think the guys that really follow me are, a lot of them are very big guitar fans and they're just in awe that I might play better guitar than them. <laughs> and they're like, how did she do that? So they're like, I like her. She said she can kick my butt on guitar and she's got to be cool, right? There's other, you know, things that that sort of acknowledge that you're female or male. Things, you know, that happen and definitely things in your life and how you handle situations and things that would happen to you. For instance, you know, we give birth. So when I got pregnant, it's a big deal. When guys have babies, or it's not the same thing, right? So that sort of shifted the way I had to see my career. So it changes how you can play and how you can tour and how you're able to make a living. So those things definitely had a huge impact when I got pregnant. I noticed that a lot more. When it comes down to it, when you're on the bandstand with the best players in the world, there is no male, female, black or white or anything. It's it, you're a player and that's it. Can you play? Nobody's caring what you are. <laughs>
write with my guitar in my hand. If I'm sitting down and I'm in a writing mode, I will sit with my guitar and I'll sort of do the two things at the same time and they'll sort of work themselves out. Often I'll just sit there and play it and, and um, iron it out like all at once. That, that kind of works the best for me. When I'm writing, I tend to focus on just myself and my own thoughts and my own perspective and try to find something that rings true and, and try to find some grain of truth that I can sort of focus on and grow from. Um, but I think about myself, I think about things that are just on my mind and bothering me or it's kind of self-consumption in a lot of ways, but as I've gotten older, it's, it's transformed into something that other people can relate to. And that, I think that's just from having experience in life and having things happen that other people relate to and, you know, having a real life, a rich life. Now, before I go back to my glacier, people know I mean no harm. can heal and music does heal all the time. I think anybody that gets home from work after a bad day and puts on music, that's what they're doing. I think every blues show I've gone to and I've gone there because I wanted to feel better and people go out to see music because they want to feel better and it makes them feel better. I mean it travels through time, it travels through space. I mean, it's a, it's a very odd art form when you think about that, right? Not, not every art form can do that. Um, it's compassionate, specifically blues music gets really deep into the human condition and all aspects of it. It's not just sad music, you know, blues isn't sad music. People would say, oh, blues brings you down, but no, it's not true. There's happy blues, there's joyous, there's sexy blues, there's every, I always say it's a celebration of hu being human. It's just a celebration, you know, you, the, to be human, it, it's everything. So blues kind of brings you into all those places and the deeper you go, sometimes it goes into the deepest joints, you know. But, and that's where the most healing can happen, is when you go to the deepest place. like what they say a calling and when you have a calling you follow um, hopefully you follow it you can follow it through all kinds of situations and not and not leave you know not leave that path <laughs> Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. 
<laughs> so hard not to look at the camera. <laughs> I'm always like... <laughs>